Hello everybody, my name is Gary J, and welcome to my speedrun submission video for The Way Remastered. The Way is a PC and Switch game. It is a 2D platformer, puzzler, adventure kind of game. There's a lot of different kind of genres in this, I really don't know exactly how to describe it. But um, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in this. Three, two, one, go. That's... Keep messing that up. <laughs> Three, two, one, there we go. Beautiful. So, this game has a very deep story. I'm gonna kinda abridge it real quick, since I got a minute and a half of downtime before we actually play the game. So, Tom, we're playing as Major Tom, and um, he's kind of in a, a government research facility, kinda like Area 51. He and a bunch of teams, including in a big group he and a big team, rather, including his wife, went to a alien planet to try to look for um, some form of eternal life. That's not originally why they went to look there, but they thought they could find it eventually. Unfortunately, they did not come across anything, so they came back. And while back, Major Tom's or Tom's wife unfortunately died in, a, in an accident. And Tom was very sad, depressed. So he decided... What? Let's try that one more time. He's. Our entire story is we're gonna help Major Tom go back to the planet and hopefully find the hidden temple of life. They could not come across any, any other evidence, but hopefully we can go back and find it for him. So, right now all I'm doing is collecting paperwork. There was a little, a little thing right there. So during the fade out cutscene, I held right. And that just made let me walk during the cutscene. And I just ended up farther right. Usually I would end up over there in front of the tank. But I'm just let me go a little faster, a little farther. So yeah, now we're at the factory. So unfortunately, Tom doesn't actually have a spaceship of his own. So we kind of have to steal one. <laughs> So, we have to go to this, his place of work and steal one. This is going to be the introduction of the first major glitch in the run. There we go. Beautiful. Um, so, if you pause the game, the same frame you're about to die, you don't die. I'm assuming because the pause screen just takes over with that. It takes priority. I guess. Beautiful. So we're going to be kind of using that. This first chapter is the first main place we use. It's really the only main place we use it, unless I get stuck later on, and I'll use it as a backup. But granted, like I said, it is a one-frame trick, so I'm going to most likely end up messing it up this run. So that's just a forewarning in advance. This first chapter is a little dull. There aren't any big glitches besides that. Um, we kind of played the level, I would say as intended, but not really. Because thankfully, Major Tom can just tank a few bullets from these machines. But we do have to do certain things in certain orders, so we are limited with creativity. Right here, we're supposed to do this later when we get the gun. We get a gun later, we can kill those guys. But since I can just take bullets to the face, um, I'm just gonna tackle this now because I don't like backtracking. Right here, this is the first main puzzle. We have to make it so these three gauges coming up. Uh, beautiful. All equal four, and that powers the generator. So. Tom can tank a few bullets, but he doesn't push things very fast. So, unfortunately, we do have to take our time here. Also, you may have noticed the language is in Japanese. Um, it's so all the cutscenes progress by spoken word. So, um, Japanese saves a whopping three and a half seconds. As far as we know, so. That is pretty neat. 
So you may notice right there, um, I have him in a state where he can't react, he can't see me. But right here, I'm going to get the liftoff code and I'm going to reset the level. He is now back active, which is kind of a bit of a burden, specifically coming up soon. Did that work? Did I get the right color? Nope, I didn't. Okay. It, it ate my input. Great. Beautiful. No. That kind of messed up the cycle. It's whatever. That cycle is usually very, very good. It's very tight, but I messed it up, so... Here's kind of a bit of a headache. There are five enemies I have to tank through in a row. And, you know, like I said, it's a one-frame trick. So I'm probably going to end up messing this up. Also, the pause buffer. I'm using the Joy-Cons on the Switch. We're playing on the Switch version for reasons that will come across later. Um... You have to press the plus button, and then X, in order to pause buffer by frames. Because there are, thankfully, two menus that pause the game. There we go. Beautiful. Also, I'm going to try to not die here. Or have to reset the level? Yeah. Joy-Cons are amazing, aren't they? Because if I do end up having to reset, that area becomes active again, and I'd have to pause buffer through them again. Which would kind of be inconvenient. That was... I got that one a little too close. I didn't know if I was on the right cycle or not, so... Or rather, I didn't know what cycle I was on. Because I got the first section first try. You probably noticed, I death abused and I reset the level earlier. Um, so everything in, everything is go, goes on a global timer, or global, yeah, global timer. And also, well, that's unfortunate. Everything goes on a global timer. So when I reset, it all, every moving enemy goes back to the a preset cycle. So what I can do is I can reset the level to a pattern that's more optimal. Also, grabbing a ladder cancels fall damage. You do die if you fall too far. So, this is really the only area you're going to see me reset for that. Also, thankfully, I mentioned before this is a one-frame trick. And I mentioned... I think I actually... Never mind, I already mentioned this. Um... This is going to be the only main time we use this glitch. I forgot to do the other thing. Whatever, I'll do it when I get back. You can also tell when you hit the right frame because you hear a little bit of humming. So, that helps. So now we get to the gun, which you'd think, oh great, it's a gun, I can kill enemies. Well, yeah, you can, but um, we're going to also be using it for other reasons. You will soon see. I ended up picking up this game. I really wanted to run this game, because it wasn't really full of glitches. Um, it, all, it looked just movement-based, and all you have to do is optimize movement. So like, oh great, I run a bunch of glitchy games. And um, this is just a nice, calm game to not have to worry about much. Um, like every game I touch, I eventually ended up going through a wall, and that changed this game drastically. But yeah, we got everything set up, and we're gonna lift off. So this one's about an hour. There is, I want to say like, a little less than 10 minutes of cutscenes, probably less than that, probably more like 8. Um, so there are plenty of time for donations, 
plenty of times for relaxing. So. Definitely a lot more time to elaborate and explain everything, so. And we're all not bad. Not a it's a pretty quick paced run, too. You'll see soon enough. The, uh, a, ma a few more amazing glitches we're gonna handle. So now we stole the ship. They want, they, we're gonna end up having a bounty on us later on, but that's, that's, that's later. We'll worry about that later. Um, and now we landed back on the planet we traveled to oh so long ago. The, di the, the text is still in English because the text doesn't make, make a difference if anyone's curious. The only thing that, that does matter is the spoken word. Maybe different text may lag the game differently. We've been kind of investigating that, but we haven't really found any evidence of that. So. Also, before, I should have hit the button to bring the car down before going up to the gun. But, um, I've been route testing that chapter. I'm trying to come up with a new thing, so I just completely forgot about that part of the route. So, we're gonna go down here and grab this ledge and reset the level. The game doesn't really know how to keep track of our state, so we're just floating. Yeah. Great. The game, when you reset... It has a horrible time trying to keep up to date with your current state. We'll come across we'll come across another instance of this later. I'm taking my time here because my joy has been a little finicky today. So when you grab the ledge and reset the level, it knows that you're in the air. But when you reload, we think the game thinks that you're grounded because you reloaded, so you're grounded. So you can use your ground-based things. But it doesn't remove the flag that you're in the air, so you can remove the the ground-based activities in the air. You know, I really love looking at games and trying to figure out what exactly happens in them. Honestly, a bunch of the glitches in this game confuse me, <laughs> how they work and why. But, um... Beautiful. Um... Yeah, we're allowed to just use the gun in midair. And while in midair, we can actually just float. So you saw before, I was actually able to clip through an invisible wall. So when I get in the state, I'm I can get stuck in the wall. If I do a quick turnaround and get my get farther into the wall, I can jam myself through it. Which is useful for many reasons. So, we're gonna be using that a lot. And I fell, so I actually have to reset that. Flipping back in bounds here is a little annoying. So. Thankfully, this is kind of just. This is a little bit of a longer labyrinth. There we go. But thankfully, the start is right next to the end, so we can just go through everything. Second try, not bad. The clips, you could probably tell, are a little finicky. So. I'm not going to shake a stick at a second try clip. yeah that was that um we're starting to get a bit of an in explanation on gun hovering i actually had to reset the level near the end of that animation because otherwise it would spawn me back down there spawn me back down and this of course saves a little bit of time unfortunately i grabbed the ledge again if you finish the animation then the game corrects your state that was yeah no that wasn't gonna work no, I'm just gonna... Yeah. Okay. I was very barely off the cycle. There is a perfect cycle you can make where you can just not have to kill those guys. So.
This is story story point. Um, we found we solved the puzzle that I can solve in three seconds, but they couldn't solve within the, th the three months they were here. And uh, we were able to find a stone. We used the stone to open the door, and this area, which was completely invisible before, we now found. So yeah, pretty neat. Unfortunately, here we can't grab any ledges in order to um, get to get the gun hover. There's a few ways you can initiate the gun hover state. One is canceling the climbing animation on a ladder, climbing on a ledge, doing a very specific glitch where you walk up a ladder and then get stuck and then reset. That's a fun glitch. That's what we thought we originally had to do, but thank God that's not that's not required anymore. So now we find natives. So, and they ran away from us. They were very confused. Which I mean, rightfully so. If I saw a man T post fly across the air while I was walking by, I'd be pretty dang confused as well. I'm actually gonna walk up here and. Jump up here. Skip grabbing the ledge. If you stand still, you jump slightly higher. Which is pretty weird, I will say. I'll walk down here. And we're supposed to find a. We're supposed to lose our gun and then get attacked by a big beast, which you're about to see right now. But we skip that cutscene. That actually skips about, I want to say, a minute and a half of gameplay. We're going to load. Reload. And this is a little weird to explain. So I'm going to try my best. So we need to wait for him to get lower in the map. So this is a bit of an auto scroller. He's going to try to chase us down, quote unquote. I'm actually too high up, so I need to do this. Okay. Yeah, this isn't as much of a time safe as I was hoping. So this door opens when he gets there, but I don't want to wait for him, so I just go through the ceiling. This is... Oh, the cutscene actually canceled my fall damage. Neat. Yeah. This was not as much of a time save. You can actually get here way before that gets there. I just didn't do the setup properly. So now, unfortunately, we actually don't have our gun anymore. We got an orb. It has magical powers. It lets us use the technology that is on this planet. But unfortunately, you can't sustain the orb like you can a gun. Like, you can hold your gun out. You can't... You can't just hold the orb in midair. So, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to gun hover. So, that mo limits our movement a little bit. But we're going to be able to get some alternate strats soon enough. So. Also... Um, because we glitched through the wall, there's no music here. Beautiful. So now he's just not going to follow me. So that, I completely forgot about this. But I did the pause buffer strat where I paused the same frame I died. And it actually duped me. That's another neat thing. He and, I want to say, well, no, there's a few instances where that can happen. They just copy your body because it's, it's a death animation. And, um, that was gruesome. He's supposed to be hunting us, but I sacrificed my twin. I sacrificed a clone of myself. And, um, it let me not have to worry about him. I also forgot to split, so, oops. That's a little weird, I'm not really explaining it very well. In the story, we have to, we use the orb to make water come and we electrocute it and kill him. So, also, serious time. Thank god. No, I messed it up! So there's actually a story trigger here that I'm supposed to hit when I first get here, but I didn't. I'd have to jump over it. 
it's buddy. a little bit of a precise jump, I actually. So. Nope. <laughs> Usually you can soft lock this if you um, reset too early. So thank God I haven't done that yet. Why am I not getting this? That's death. <laughs> He's just stuck there now. Oops. There we go. So now we can actually go through this door. And we find the village. That, um, they saw that we defeated the beast. Even though they didn't see we defeated the beast. So, now they're our friends. And they honestly kind of treat us like a god. Which is pretty neat. So, we have the orb. Apparently it is, like... I wouldn't say a deity necessarily, but it is a um the answer is near, I can feel it. Look, it's the answer. Um, it is a amazing piece of technology that we can use on pretty much everything here. It also gives us abilities later on. Which is pretty neat. So we use the orb on this computer and we're able to actually access their alien language. Before we hadn't we were just going the team was going off of Grammar rules and everything. Trying to figure out what the thing said to try to find clues. The story's a little convoluted right now, I will say. So I'm probably not doing a good job explaining it. But, um, right now we find out that we need to get... What is it? Three? Yeah, we have to get three orbs. In order to power the computer that's over in the right. And they're locked behind three different trials. So... We're on a bit of an adventure now to go do that. I know. Thrilling commentary, I know, I'm sorry. You wanna know a sick speed strat? Boom. Beautiful. I will say though, um, we don't have gun hover anymore. We can't gun hover. But um soon enough I'm gonna actually have a, another alternative to that. Another pretty good glitch. So we have to follow. T Tin Can has to follow us around here. And you know. Just to piss off one of my mods. Tin Can is too far away. Tin Can, Tin can, is, can is too far away. Tin 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 Can is too far away. The dialogue in this game is amazing. Totally not weird. <laughs> so I grabbed the ladder there. For the memes, Samu. For the memes. So I grabbed the ladder there and reset. It actually spawned Tin Cane closer. Ooh, that was close. Um, so usually we have to wait for him. But there's two different resets I'm going to do. And that's going to manipulate his position and speed him up a little bit. I'm gonna reset right here. And there he is. Let's go. I also didn't. There's another one. I can just spam access, which is the orb ability. Let's go. And uh, he just says, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. It's pretty good. So we do have to actually travel all the way back to the beginning section for the first trial we're going to do, which is teleportation. You could think, oh, teleportation. That's actually pretty cool. You can just teleport around. It's unfortunately pretty limited, except for the way we're going to use it. So let us just get over here and get right to that. I'm also going to hopefully go tin canless here. This is a pretty hard enemy manip strat I'm going to do. There. Beautiful. Yep. I'm gonna probably get caught here. No? Yeah. That's okay. I'm just gonna hope I can. I don't like this position. That should be better. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> almost got me. You're supposed to have Tin Can to scare him away, but I really didn't want to wait for him because he's so slow. So. 
if you time it well enough, you can barge through it. So teleportation is you use it once and you set a pre uh, you set a spot to re to teleport back. You teleport again by pressing the button. But if you interrupt the second animation, um, the game, as with the um, gun hover, it gets confused with your state. You technically have a physical body, but it also just doesn't. It's also not technically there. So I can just go through walls now. I don't interact with weights, platforms. Um, a few enemies don't actually notice I exist. And this lets me kind of just travel out of bounds and be more direct with some movement. So right here, I'm supposed to be using an elevator to kind of go to three different sections here. But the elevator is slow, so I just kind of went through the ceiling. So I'm gonna come down here, and I actually have to do this. Just a little bit of manipulation through the elevator, otherwise it wouldn't actually be there when I get there. Nope. That's unfortunate. So, unfortunately, I do subsect, I am, when you gun hover and when you're in this state, you still take fall damage. You do die if you fall too far. I think I've already shown that. Yeah, I died earlier to demonstrate the fact that you can die. But also, if you hold down, you can clip through walls. But you have, I have to time that exit pretty well in order to actually land here. I'm gonna jump over him. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm actually gonna reset the level here to get a better cycle. So I'm actually... I can't interact with the ladders in this state, so I have to become physical again, and I'm gonna escape him. <laughs> that was close. So, I'm gonna go over here and get the first orb. And get out of here. I probably didn't do the best job explaining that, but, um... You also notice when I was walking, I had I jumped continuously. If you just hold forward, you actually start clipping through the ground. And if you go below the ground's hitbox, you fall down. So that is pretty unfortunate to do so. Do actually so. I jump a specific amount of time every bit just to try to um, minimize the landing animations. I'm actually just going to wait for 10 can here. That cycle is a little tougher to make, so. Also, you think that looks easy, but that timing those jumps are actually kind of annoying when they're spaced out like that. So. Like I mentioned before, I wanted to speed run this game. I don't want to update Windows 10, please, computer. Um, I we started the route this. I started messing with this game because I like the concept. Oh, I actually go here. I like the concept of a not very glitched 2D platformer adventure game where you have to just optimize movement. And I was testing on stream, and then I accidentally reset while teleporting, and then that's how I found that animation, that um amazing state, you could say. So right here, I got shield. It's a shield. It's pretty epic. But an another neat thing is, so I, men I mentioned earlier, we can't gun hover anymore. Because we didn't have a thing that we could use to sustain ourselves. Like, an item we can use to sustain. But, you can sustain shield. So, when I get down here... This is a long, like a long shoot down, and like the other one, I don't want to use the elevator because it's slower. So right here, I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm going to teleport to get collision back. I'm going to grab the ledge reset, teleport to get the teleportation collision back. And what that lets me do is 
it lets me hover. But I also have the no clip stay. Also, like I mentioned before, these guys don't actually know I exist. Or rather, they don't see me. So, I'm able to just... They, they usually shoot at you. You're supposed to use shield in order to not die. Okay. Also, I'm hovering more so because I don't have to deal with the landing animation. And also, I do this specifically because I can't make, I can't make those gaps without this. So the fact that I can hover over the gaps means I can completely skip the elevator. And I can scale right back up. And this is, I want to say about seven seconds faster than using the elevator. So. A little bit of time save is not bad at all. Also, leaving through these, I lose my state, my, uh, my, uh, glitch states. Because this is technically a different map. There is a difference between different room and different map. Um, so a different map, you transition. This and the next room, well, no. When I was, a good example, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is the old strat. Let me just... Not do that. Oh, I forgot to split two times. What was I saying? I completely forgot. I'm sorry. Whoops. You want to see a new strat? <laughs> Since I forgot what I was talking about, oops. Come on, let's be, let's work. Beautiful. So walking up and down ladders or, or stairs is really slow. So I'm just gonna clip through that. Except I'm going to actually die to show you the fact that even when you're hovering, you can die. That's exactly why I wanted to do that. Beautiful clip. I'm actually kind of impressed that worked. That was so smooth. Go in here. And we get Magnesis. That's not the right term, that's the term from Breath of the Wild, but you know what, I keep forgetting this, so I'm just gonna call him Magnesis. So, we can use this to control the technology, so you know what that means. Just go through all the walls. There's a theory route we're working on, where we actually come here first, and that allows us to have gun hover for the teleportation, and going to the teleportation and coming back. Um, the way it looks, there's a few more optimizations we can make with the route, but it is unfortunately a little slower. So, but hopefully soon enough we can uh, use that. The main difference is this room is a little slower, is a lot slower without the um, teleportation. Because with gun hover, you actually can't go down. You can't glitch downwards. You'd have to go to a lower area and then clip hor go horizontally. Or go out of bounds and then fall out of bounds like that. So. It makes this area a little more obnoxious. I got confused why my sum of best, my best possible time became an hour and five minutes. I'm like, what? But I just forgot to split it two times. Oh, that's also still not the right spot to split.
Portal. Here's a neat little strat. Portal. Speed gaming. I don't know why that works, but it works, and I'm not going to complain. So, now we have an idea where to go, so we're going to go there, except, unfortunately, I mentioned earlier in the run, we have a bounty because, we you know, we stole millions of dollars worth of equipment from the U.S. government, so this space bounty hunter, totally not Boba Fett, um, is going to try to hunt us down. The little does he know, we can defy the laws of gravity and physics. So he's gonna have a, a hell of a fight to deal with. I'm kinda sad we play in Japanese because his English accent is amazing. It's a very generic deep Russian accent and it's amazing. I wish I could replicate it, but I'm gonna not because I'm gonna make a make a fool out of myself if I do. So even though the fact we can go through walls, we can defy gravity, we have we can just remove our existence, physical existence, we get bested by a laser, and we have to crash down in the desert. So, you know, when he lands, he has a pet, an alien pet, that has saved his life and helps him with everything. And he investigates the um, tank and forgets about Tinkan. So, but, um, I mean... Not, not to blame him. I feel like that's still pretty important to him. Totally not foreshadowing at all. Totally I recommend buying this game. This game is a lot of fun for a first playthrough. There's a lot of achievements. There's a lot of areas I'm skipping and I will end up skipping. So, um... Yeah, we kind of cut off 25 minutes. For about an hour of casual gameplay. But we'll get to that eventually. So I'm gonna go over here and grab the ledge, and what do you know? I'm gonna reset the game. Oh, come on. There we go. Before this, I had a super arbitrary out of bounds where we had to walk along a very skinny platform out of bounds in order to clip through and do that. Nah, you can just hover over it. This literally skips like minute and a half of the pre over the previous strat. So, we have two things we have to do. We have to spawn a rock, and we have to get, make this thing move. And we're gonna drop a rock on this robot. But, um, I have to make sure this is right, because otherwise I lose a minute. Yeah. Um, so he has a core that can explode, and our plan is to go below him, drop the core, make it explode, and kill the bounty hunter. So, that's kind of what we have to do. Unfortunately, we just have to move a giant rock and crush him, but thankfully we have a little bit of a little mechanism that'll help us. But unfortunately, we have to power it. In order to power it, I first have to move these pizzas, and we get water, but we realize it's clogged, and we have to go all the way down here, not there, down here, to fix it. Probably tell by that pan, it's actually pretty far away, so. Also, 50-50 chance, let's go. Come on. Come on. Hey! That's not, it's supposed to go behind that. It's supposed to go into the background. But sometimes it doesn't. 
it seems to work about 50 50 time about 50 percent of the time so so i mentioned earlier i have to make sure i get the the piping proper first try so when i beat this the cutscene is gonna pan over there and when i reset the game the game thinks that's where i was so it's gonna reload me back here and that skips a lot of time that saves about i want to say 45 50 seconds of movement so That was a neat little discovery I ended up finding. So. Or we, rather, ended up finding. Can you put that in here? Try to optimize movement a little bit. And race over here. Ooh. Beautiful. And we did it! And I'm dead. Um. If I wait two seconds and then die, I spawn down here. If I were to try to reload up there, then I would still load up there for some reason. I have to wait two seconds. I could technically just reload the level, but dying is a little more fun. Dying is funnier, I think. So. But you have to wait two seconds for the game to update the state. It's a little weird. Ooh, that was close. That was a little too close. So yeah, we got the power core, and we're gonna push it over here. There's a minor glitch I'm gonna try to do. It's pretty consistent. So usually during the cutscene that's coming up, you he pushes it. But if I enter the cutscene and let go of the bomb at the same time, yep, there we go. So he let goes of it. He lets go of it, and he just walks over there. That saves like a second and a half. Maybe. Movement. So I'm supposed to put this foot there. Oops. Under there. So, we defeated him. Here's a bit of a long cutscene. Someone explained a little bit of plot. So, our ship has crashed. And we still have the information for where we need to go to access the hidden city. We can't use the car, the ship. We have to use our little travel, our little. What would you call that? Not a. I mean, maybe a space scooter. I guess that'd probably be the best way to name it. We have to use our little space scooter to travel over there. So we have to leave the ship here, including the wife, which is heartbreaking. But we gotta find the hidden city. So we're gonna go over there, and I will note. When I get to this area, um, this upcoming area is not programmed the best. Um, we will see. So we come here and we enter this map. Wait a second. We enter this map. We're gonna go up here. This is where the hidden city is supposed to be. Come on, come on. But where is the hidden city? So I'm going to hit this button. And three more buttons come up. So now we have to go to three different towers in order to... Three different batteries in order to power them to make these buttons work in order to access the hidden city. But that takes a long time. I really don't want to do this. So we're going to do something a little weird. Um, this is actually a pretty interesting exploit we found. Hopefully, though, I have something new I can use instead. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to travel there and then exit to the main menu. You think, why did I do that? But I mentioned before, this, this area is loaded a little weird. So we're going to load into the area. You'd think there'd only be one button, but there's three. So we left. And the game thinks we're, we come back here because our checkpoint is still here. Nope. Okay. This is why we play on the Switch version. That is a three-frame pause, but I messed it up because I'm smart. So um, you can actually just close the game and open it back up. 
So we still don't have to go over there. But yeah. Um, we exit the map. It knows we exited the map. And then we enter the map. But the game thinks, wait, we set the checkpoint that you en exited already. So now that you're entering, you must have beaten it. I messed it up again. Damn. I don't think it's, it might be a little less than two fr like three frames. It might be a frame or two. That's actually a new new strat we just found. This actually saves 30 seconds. This is what we used to do. We found this like three days ago, actually. So I'm not the best practice with this one. I actually found this by accident during my PB. And Come over here. We hit the final button f for that are powered by the batteries we totally went to. The Hidden City shows up. So now we, all we gotta do is travel over there. I started mentioning yes. this earlier. I recommend playing this game. Yet this game, I unfortunately, is a little glitchy. You do run into a few glitches casually if you reload at a weird time or anything. But besides that, this game is actually a really fun game to play casually. It's a great game to play at first. Neat little visual bug. bug. By the way, do you guys like Battletoads? I like battle toads. Uh -huh. the noise something in. I just realized this is actually on English. I forgot to change that. Oh no, that's right. It actually changes back to English when you boot up the when you close the game and open it. So that's unfortunate. I'm gonna have to fix that in a minute. I, I said it back to English. Um, the last cutscene we go through is a minute and 50 seconds, and the Japanese saves three seconds. So, actually, I think three and a half, I think? So it is worth setting it back up. You know, if I were to have gotten it first try, which I did not. <laughs> Also, I kind of wish the puzzles were randomized. It would add a little bit more improv to the run, but besides that, like, I can understand. Like, at the very beginning, the fuse you need is always the fuse that looks like a lemon, which is red and, red and oval. Or, not red. Yellow and oval. I wish that could be randomized every time. I feel like that'd be a little more interesting and add a little more interesting route. A little bit more to the route. Also, we enter this hidden city, and you know, the first thing you do when you enter an alien city is you just yell and try to get as much attention as possible. So, oh, I remember what I was trying to say earlier. So, there's a difference between rooms and state in a maps. I'm gonna as I try to not die here. So these three maps are on the same room. I'm gonna be sad if I die. I'm just gonna do it the easy way. And I messed up the easy way. This is gonna be a little visually nauseating and I apologize. So, um, these, this map has all three different rooms, so I can glitch through them. So if I were to go out of bounds in one, I could access the other, and thankfully they're all just one on top of the other. I go over here, go over here, and this should hopefully be the right spot. Nah, dang it. Um, if you're in a, the perfect standing spot, you can skip that little bit of dialogue. Saves a second, of course. 
But Tin Can, he got hit by laser and he came back and he saves us one more time. The story is the story in this game is actually very deep and a bit dark too. But um, we lost our partner in crime, but we found what we needed. So he gave us he gave his life. Sad face, no space. Nice. Okay. If you jump into that cutscene, it's jumping is faster than its walking speed. So I just save like I saved a hat like a quarter of a second, let's say. No. So this evil pizza destroyed the wall the, we had the blue pizza that was helping us but the evil pizza trapped us he doesn't want us to get to the hidden the hidden city of life so he trapped the wall but thankfully Tom is very determined as you can probably tell by his he got everything set up she got he got her set up and he was digging through a long time like I mentioned earlier jumping is faster than his walking speed Old Tom is limited to his walking speed. So, we can just jump and it speeds this up a little more. I don't know why I'm crouching there. So, we just continue on digging. And, we find it. I'm very good at explaining plot and lore. I hope you guys understand that. This is why you should have me in your in your speedrunning marathon. <laughs> Just me explaining lore. And it's our friendly blue pizza. It's technically a sp an alien spirit that guides us, I think. But um, that's complicated. Pizza's not complicated. Going on jumping. So, we come down here and we find out that the hidden, the hidden temple of life, is virtual reality, in a sense. So we get our mind gets uploaded to the machine, uploaded to this machine, and we're here. This is technically the place of eternal life. Although, we were a little misdirected. Hey, we have our gun back. I hope that... I don't know what that's going to mean, but, you know, we have our gun back. Um, he trapped us in this little maze area. So usually we go through this. He uses his night... Tom's nightmares. Um, there's ghost pirates and tentacles and weird-looking alien men that shoot projectiles. But I really don't want to do that. So I'm going to grab this ledge. And count with me now. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. That should be good. So we uh, scaled the out of bounds wall, the farthest wall. And we got all the way to the top, near the top of the map. And we're just going to hold right for a bit. Hopefully we find something. It's like I know we're going to find something. And this actually leads us right to the end. And hopefully I did the glitch right. I did not. Okay. So, um... I reset the I reset the level there in order to skip a bit of dialogue. This is the final boss, by the way. I skipped a little bit of dialogue. Um, 
just by resetting the level. You, I had shit to reset it twice because it actually doubles the shots, which I like to love. I lovingly call hard mode because it just doubles all the shots. Excuse me. But um, I'm actually gonna pay attention from here on out because I can easily die, and dying makes you go all the way back to the beginning of the boss. Yeah, it's a very good skip. Counting. I learned that skill from Barney's Hide and Seek Adventure. For Barney's Hide and Seek. It's the best speed game. Yo, shout out to. I said I was gonna shut up, but I'm not, so. If I die, I'm gonna be sad. Shout outs to the actual speed run of it, because they keep finding tech speeding it up by frames. Dang it! Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to shut up during that part. Um. My world record actually dies here. Although later in the fight, so. I mean, God forbid I die again. Um, but yeah. It's super interesting how the actual Barney Hide and Seek run keeps finding setups that save frames. So this is evil pizza. The final boss is I want to be the guy, which is, I mean, you kind of think, look at this game and like think what would be a final boss. I feel like this is pretty fitting. I don't love like a gun showdown kind of thing, but I feel like it'd be hard to for him, so. Here's where the fun starts. And I'm gonna shut up. I forgot! No, that's not the right setup anymore! I'm sad. I'm sorry. I messed up. We have a setup. I have a setup here. I just messed it up because I confuse it with a different setup we used to have. So. This is more time for donations. I just wanted to demonstrate the fact that if you die at the very end of it, you do restart all the way to the beginning. Which, you know, in a speedrun, that's kind of annoying for a final boss, so I wanted to show you guys that that is a thing that happens. But, um... Unfortunately, the final boss doesn't really have a lot to explain. We're, just, we're hitting his evil core and making him glitch out. Beautiful. Here we go. And that's the final hit on the final boss. Record right now, as of recording this, is 58.50. But there is... 55 is very easily possible. You can probably imagine from all the frame perfect tricks, the weird, glitchy, out of bounds things we have to input. You can imagine from all that, but... There's a lot of failure. There's a lot of failure points that can lose time, and definitely the record died. Like I mentioned earlier, dies in that final boss. So we have a lot of time saved. 
And unfortunately, right here, we just have to listen to dialogue. So, I hope you guys like the game, like watching the run. It's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun game to to run as well. I would recommend picking up this game. Switch is the most consistent for the fact that you can reload the level. Um, if you mess up the pause, the pause strat in the battery section. Um, so, other than that, it's on PC if you want to play it casually, play it on PC. Um, I think it's five bucks, usually. Five or six, something like that. Would definitely recommend. And, um, right now, here, we have a choice. We can go to the land of eternal life which is that simulation with our wife they can't save her physical body but they can save her brain and we'd go there but the only downside is we would be trapped there forever and they like they say there's no point in living if there's no death or we can stay in the real life and help populate this this area bring it back to the glory it was before these guys were trapped so that's our choice Weirdly, living with forever for your wife is the bad ending. I don't like that. That's a little that's my only kind of gripe with this game. But um we're going to go over here and time. 1010 <laughs> You guys like binary? 10101.66. Um submission my estimate's going to be an hour 5 minutes. It is very generous. Like I mentioned before, 55 is easy. 58 is pretty consistent now. Um, so 105 gives a lot of the way. And you kind of see the choice we made. We helped build the city back. And pretty deep story. Pretty adorable story. And we see him staring at the statue that they dedicated. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Gary J. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, yeah. I'm gonna leave you guys to this pretty somber music. Thanks for watching.